Hello, my name is Rogers Jackson. I am the pastor of the Emmanuel Baptist Church, 8301 South Damon Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. And I will be sharing with you a sermon for Sunday, September 27, 2020. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the 23rd number of the psalm. Psalm 23, I want to read verses 1 through 6. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the Lord's word for a revival. I want to talk about the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. Historically, and even presently, a shepherd's primary responsibility is the safety and welfare of the flock of sheep that he or she ministers to. Some flocks may include as many as 1,000 sheep. The shepherd will graze the sheep by leading them to areas of good forage and keep a watchful eye out for poisonous plants that may be mixed in with the good grass. Not only did the shepherd care for the sheep, but the shepherd was responsible for the goats as well that were among the sheep. Oftentimes, the shepherd would separate the sheep from the goats. He would isolate them from the sheep by herding the goats away using his guard dogs. Many shepherds were on call 
for their sheep around the clock. It was almost a 24 hour a day job as well as ministry. Not only was the shepherd responsible for the welfare and safety of the sheep, but the shepherd was to graze the sheep in good grass. Good grass in scripture means that there was a plentiful and an abundant amount of grass available for the sheep. Good grass was well pleasing to the taste and the digestion of the sheep. Good grass had nutrients that were nourishing and restoring to the sheep. Good grass brought well-being and health to the sheep. And good grass enriched the sheep with a renewed quality of life. And then the shepherd had sheepdogs who would follow behind the sheep. The sheepdogs would bring back various sheep that may have wandered. The shepherd and the sheepdog would be around them at night to lay them down in the same area each night. The shepherd also protected the sheep from the predators of coyotes. He protected them from the wolves, the mountain lions, bears, and even wild dogs. And then the shepherd protected the health of the sheep by keeping them from diseases that were carried by insects. The shepherd would also tend to minor injuries that the sheep may have sustained in their walk with the shepherd. And then, during all hours of the day, the shepherd would check on the young lambs at all hours during the day, and even during the night. And then, in the spring, when the hair of the sheep grew extremely thick, the shepherd would cut off their fleece without nicking or cutting their skin. In scripture, a shepherd had the following responsibilities. The shepherd would lead the sheep out of the sheep corral and bring them into the sheepfold at night. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11, the Bible says that the shepherd would feed the flock 
and gently, carefully, and slowly lead the sheep who had young lambs. And then in verse 1b, because of the shepherd's care for the sheep, listen to this, the Bible said, they would not be in want. Let me say that again. Because of the shepherd's care for the sheep, the sheep would not be in want. Because the Lord is our shepherd, both you and I may be in want. We may want something, but the scripture says, we shall not want. We shall not want for the shepherd's care. We shall not want for the shepherd's love. We shall not want for the shepherd's protection. We shall not want for the shepherd's guidance in our lives. In scripture, to be in want is to have a shortage or a lack of the necessities of life. To be in want is to be without a place of rest and revival. To be in want is to come up short in the supplies that you need to survive. And then in verse 2, the shepherd, as the scripture says, makes me lie down in green pastures. Your question to me is, why does the shepherd lay the sheep down in green pastures? To lie down in green pastures is to rest in a place of security and safety. To lie down in green pastures is to be where plants sprout and vegetation is edible to the taste. To lie down in green pastures is to be in a flourishing place where the plants are healthy and reviving to the sheep's lives. And then in verse 2, the B clause, it says, The shepherd makes me, the sheep, to lie down in green pastures. How is a sheep made to lie down by the shepherd. A sheep is made to lie down just like when you had small children. You made them lie down. A sheep is made to lie down in green pastures when they are relaxed and fed. The sheep lies down when they feel they are safe. They lie down when they are secured. They lie down when they are protected by the shepherd. Then they lie down. 
And then in verse 2b of the passage, the Bible says that the shepherd leadeth me beside still waters. To be led by still waters, waters that are calm, is to be conducted and escorted to it. As you know, sheep cannot drink from running water. They need water that is still. So to lead the sheep to still waters, it means that the shepherd would guide and direct them to this level of refreshment and revival. And then, to be led to still waters is to be spiritually guided in the path of righteousness and blessing that renews your soul. So yes, the sheep and the lambs are led, directed, guided beside still waters. Your question is, what are still waters? Still waters are water that is not rushing nor turbulent. The Lord leads us beside still waters that are at rest, waters that are peaceful, waters that are motionless, waters that are quiet to revive us for the journey that is ahead of us. And then in verse 3, the A clause, it is by the still waters that the Lord our shepherd, listen to this, he restores my soul. By the still waters, the Lord our shepherd, he restores my soul. In scripture, a person's soul is their inner spiritual being that reflects to others their thoughts and emotions. You've heard people say that brother or sister so-and-so, they are a great soul. Yes, in Scripture, in the Old Testament, the soul is your inner spiritual being that reflects to others your thoughts and your emotions. In the New Testament, my soul in the New Testament is suke, suke. The soul is the Lord's spiritual breath that is within you that gives you and me the ability to communicate heart to heart with others and also with the Lord. Your question to me then is in what way does the Lord, our shepherd, restore our souls? The Lord restores our soul by spiritually and mentally strengthening us for the social and spiritual challenges 
that are already ahead of us. The Lord, our shepherd, restores our soul by enabling and empowering us to carry out our spiritual and social obligation to assist those who are in need. Listen to this. The Lord is our shepherd who restores our soul in order that we might accomplish and carry out and carry forward what needs to be done both spiritually and socially to glorify his name as well as to bless and encourage others. Your question then is, why does the Lord, our shepherd, restore our souls? The Lord restores our souls to bring us to our full spiritual possibility to strengthen others in their times of stress, strain, and struggle. The Lord restores our soul by giving us peace in the turbulence of our moments. The Lord restores our soul by rescuing us from our spiritual strain and stress that comes to us continually. And then, my friends, in verse 3, the B clause, the Lord, our shepherd, leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. He leads me there to cause me to walk right, to talk right, to live right to live morally and holy, to glorify him and to be a blessing to others. And then in verse 6, the A clause, David, the shepherd king, testifies that the Lord's goodness will follow us all the days of our lives. In the Old Testament, the Lord's goodness, Yatab, the Lord's goodness, Yatab, that follows us, it does so by continually being with us to deposit the Lord's benevolent kindness into our lives. And then secondly, the Lord's goodness, tub in the Old Testament, T-U-B, the Lord's goodness, tub, follows us with spiritual blessings that revives us in the moments of our difficulty. And then there's the Lord's Salaam goodness. Salaam goodness. The Lord's Salaam goodness follows us to renew us, to revive us, and to restore us when we are spiritually weakened and 
discouraged. And most certainly, the Lord's Agathosune, Agathosune goodness, the Lord's goodness follows us to deposit into our life his spiritual well-being that we might make well the lives of others continually. And then, my friends, in verse 6a, King David testifies that the Lord's mercy has said, the Lord's has said mercy follows us all the days of our lives. Every shepherd had sheepdogs that would follow the sheep. They would be behind the sheep, moving them forward and bringing them to their place. Yes, King David testified, the Lord's mercy follows me and follows us all the days of our lives, safeguarding us from what follows us that may hinder us from carrying forward the Lord's righteous work through our lives. Yes, my friends, the Lord's Raham mercy. Thank you, Lord. The Lord's Raham mercy will follow you. It will follow me. It will follow us all the days of our life by empowering us and strengthening us to face the most serious difficulties that we might experience today, tomorrow, and the next day. Yes, the good news today, tomorrow, and tomorrow declares to us Listen to this, that surely the Lord's mercy will follow us. Yes, this is great news. Surely the Lord's Elo mercy will follow us all the days of our life. This mercy, Eloyo is the mercy that will favor us and carry us through the miseries and the mistakes that we make. It will carry us into his immediate goodness all the days of our life. It was the singer of our generation, Lawrence Thompson, and the Music City Mass Choir that proclaims the following praise. Lord, you've been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. Looking back over my life, when I was down and out and didn't have a dime, you made a way for me. Lord, you've been good to me. You've been good to me. Master, you've been a mother for me. You've been a father for me. You didn't leave me. Lord, you've been good to me. You stayed right 
by my side and you brought me from a mighty long way. Lord, you've been good to me. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that keeps us in times like these. There may be someone listening that in the moments that we are experiencing, you may not have ever thought about giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I say to you, my friend, the Lord, our shepherd, came all the way from heaven to earth to guide us into his saving purpose. If you have never given your life to him, I'm going to pray a prayer aloud that you can pray in your heart, asking the Lord Jesus, our shepherd, to take control of your life. And my friend, if you do it, he'll save you right now. Pray this prayer in your heart as I pray it aloud. Lord Jesus, I've heard great news. The great news is that you want to be my shepherd. Lord, forgive me right now of my sins. Forgive me, Lord, of my shame. Forgive me of my guilt. By the blood of the cross on which you died to save me. Lord Jesus, I receive you right now in my heart by faith. Use me now, Lord, to follow you into the work that you have assigned for me. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you pray that prayer and ask the Lord to take control of your life, he's already there. If you have opportunity during this period of corona and there's a church somewhere around your home, put on your mask, put on your gloves, put on your hat if you have to, and go in and sit spaced out according to the regulations and hear the word of God. And if the Holy Spirit moves you, get up from your seat with your mask on and go down to the front and tell the pastor you want to be on the Lord's side. We're praying for you now that the Lord might keep you, that the Lord might strengthen you, that the Lord might enrich you, and that the Lord might use you for the greater and the more that he has already set in front of you. In Jesus' name, amen.